it's not necessary for you to be able to calculate the chi-square by hand. However, it is quite good to go through so that you understand what's happening when you see a chi-square statistic. So here's a chi-square formula. It reads chi-square equals the sum of each observed minus expected frequency squared and then divided by the expected frequency. Now to show you how this is calculated step by step, uh, the, the table at the bottom is useful. The first column of figures shows the observed frequency. In our example, this is a number who conformed and did not conform in each of the group sizes. So as you can see, this sums to a total of 200 people in the study. The second column are the expected frequencies in each cell, which, is, which have previously been calculated. Now next, recall that the chi-square compares the observed to the expected frequencies. And this we can obtain by simply subtracting the expected, E, from the observed, O. The only trouble is, it, is with this is that we always sum to zero, which is why our formula requires us to square each of, the, uh, each of those uh, O minus E's. So in the last column, we take the O minus E squared and divide it by E and sum it across sum it across all of them to give us our, our, our value of chi-squared, which in this case is 9.16. Now, as with any hand calculation, before we can look up probability tables or write up our results, we need information on how many categories are being compared. The degrees of freedom for a two-way chi-square is a little more difficult than the one-way chi-square. It is the number of rows, R, minus one multiplied by the number of columns minus one. In this example, that is, there's, there's two rows minus one multiplied by two columns minus one, which gives us a degrees of freedom of one. So with this information at hand, we can now look up the chi-square table that exists in any statistics book to see if our chi-square equals or exceeds the critical chi-square for the degrees of freedom equal to one and an alpha of 0.05. Now if the observed or the calculated chi-square that we've just calculated does exceed the critical chi-square, then it is significant and we reject the null hypothesis. Of course, if not significant, we retain the null hypothesis. Now to calculate the statistical and research conclusions, please go to the SPSS videos Please note that you also need to have a good understanding of the SPSS output, which is also run in those other videos. Uh, so that you, you need to have a good understanding of the output that the two-way chi-square generates. Thank you.